In FGO, there are plenty of things that really divide fans. Some people can't stand certain aspects, while others are totally on board. It could be about a character, a specific chapter, or even just a concept. You're probably pretty familiar with this already. Take the Saberface debate, for example. Lots of fans think using Artoria's face too much for different servant designs is kind of annoying, while others think it's totally fine because she's like the mascot of FGO. Then there's the whole gender flip thing. It's not new in fate, but it still gets people talking. And don't even get started on Osakabe Hime's localization using fangirl Japanese. Some folks think it's adorable and fits her perfectly, while others think it's a bit off and doesn't really match her background. I actually talked a lot about this three in my last video, by the way. If you want to check it out, just click on the video in the top corner. These are the kinds of things we're gonna dive into this week. I'm all for discussing controversial stuff like this, so feel free to drop your thoughts or share in the comments. Let's get talking. The main character. Honestly, I'm kinda torn about Fujimaru too. Some people see Fujimaru as this regular person who faces insane challenges in the game's story, like a total champ. They admire their brains, guts, and charm. But then there are those who just can't stand them. They think Fujimaru is basically a wish-fulfillment character who gets all the praise and attention without really doing much of the heavy lifting. And for some, the whole concept of the player being the leader in the game just doesn't sit right. The criticism keeps coming especially from those who can't stand Fujimaru. They call them dull and lacking in personality, which makes it even more frustrating when they keep getting praised in the story. Yeah, in the fate concept, I get it if the idea is that servants are basically weapons. They're these perfect weapons with their own thoughts and abilities, making them the ones who do most of the fighting, which technically means the victories belong to the master. So it's Fujimaru who keeps getting all the praise. But their fans argue that over time, Fujimaru has become a more fleshed-out character. They've shown different sides of themselves, from being goofy to serious and sharp-witted. In the manga, this is way more apparent. Their involvement, attitude, and charisma really shine through. One standout moment is in Babylonia. We can compare how Fujimaru is portrayed in the game, anime, and manga in that chapter. In the anime and game, Fujimaru pretty much follows Gilgamesh's lead. But in the manga, Fujimaru stands out for being bold enough to challenge Gilgamesh and even straight up telling him they don't like his attitude. Fans are also split when it comes to how different servers are treated, especially the North American one. It's a pretty touchy subject. Some players feel let down because they get fewer rewards for the same events. The NA staff can seem unprofessional during live streams, and there's barely any communication on social media. But on the flip side, some are just happy the game is available in English, and think the complaints are kinda overshadowed by all the cool updates that make gameplay smoother, like the lower quartz cost during the first year. But this issue was only a big deal when FGO first launched. If you know, back then there were tons of problems comparing the servers. Stuff like gotcha rates, rewards, interludes, events and more. Over time, the gap between servers has gotten smaller. And now NA even gets updates earlier than the Japanese version did, which has calmed things down a bit. Regarding the differences in servers, one particularly touchy subject is the changes made to Emia Altar in the NA server. This always stirs up arguments. Some people like the change because they think it reduces racial stereotypes. They argue that localization isn't censorship and avoiding offense is just being considerate. But then there are others who don't like the alteration. They see it as censorship, especially since the NA team initially promised there wouldn't be any. What about the chapter that really splits fans? Oh, there's definitely one and you probably know it too. Yep, it's Shimosa. In Japan, it's super popular, but in the West, it's a different story. Some fans love it for the cool sword fights and the overall presentation. But others think it's really tough. Shimosa is also one of the hardest chapters to get through. Another complaint is that Shimosa spends way too much time on fight jargon. 
The chapter is written in a totally different style from the rest, packed with references to Japanese fantasy, history and mythology. It's got an all-Japanese cast with no out-of-place characters. So if you're not familiar with Japanese culture and history, you might find it boring and confusing. Some fans even feel like the cast consists of random Japanese figures that no one outside of Japan knows or cares about, and they're just constantly hyping each other up. To make it worse, Shimosa messes with the gameplay by forcing you to use specific characters for some fights, which can make those battles harder than usual. It all boils down to whether you enjoy classic martial arts movies and books with a spiritual twist. If you do, you'll probably dig it. If not, well, it might not be your cup of tea. Speaking of Shimosa, Musashi has become a pretty divisive character over time, despite being super popular at first. A big reason for this is her increasing role in the game's story. Since she showed up, Musashi has been either the main character or a major ally in several stories, which has caused some rifts in the community because she gets a lot of attention compared to other characters. On one hand, some fans like how important Musashi is to the story. They enjoy her fun yet complex personality and think she adds a lot of value, especially since she balances combat without being too overpowered. They appreciate that she brings some humor and lightness to the story without taking over completely. On the other hand, there are those who feel Musashi steals the spotlight way too much. They think she's like the creator's favorite and gets way too much praise and attention. Plus, the game often forces players to use her as a support character in battles, even when it's not always helpful. But hey, I like her, so it doesn't bother me. Another servant that causes a similar divide is Elizabeth, especially since she was introduced in non-localized media like Fate Extra. So, Western fans often don't know much about her background. Depending on who you ask, she's either a super entertaining character with some cool, affably evil traits and a fun idol singer gimmick, or her idol singer persona and overall personality can come off as annoying. The fact that she gets a lot of screen time in the story and events, thanks to her breakout character status, doesn't help. Fans who enjoy her spotlight love it, but those who don't find her presence a bit too much. Besides the servants, there's also the concept of pseudo-servants that splits fans. Basically, whenever a pseudo-servant appears, fans get divided. Some are excited to see a familiar face from the Type Moon lore, especially when the spirit and the host make sense together, and the spirit's influence is strong. For example, Muramasa fusing with Shiro was so popular that fans begged for him to be playable for years, and Parvati and Kama embodying the light and dark sides of Sakura's personality is widely praised as clever. However, others feel that the mythological figures are wasted because they'll never show up on their own as the host influences them to some extent. This issue is most notable with Zhu Liang and Sima Yi, whose personalities are almost entirely dormant after fusing with Waver Velvet and Rhin Arcasorte. It also affects other characters, especially after Strange Fake revealed that an Ishtar without Rin's influence is essentially a completely different character. And the last one is the concept of the servant verse. Some people enjoy this much wackier world that often pokes fun at Fate's usual tropes and characters, finding it a refreshing change of pace. Others, though, find it unfunny and too different from the main story to really care about. Then there are those who are mostly okay with it as a standalone thing, but would rather it not mix with the more serious stories. Honestly, I'm fine with it. I just think of it as an alternate universe far out there, and it can connect to the main story because of some magical reason. Let's just roll with that. So, what do you think? What else do you think splits the fan base? Subscribe to support me in making more awesome videos.